Hi, my name's Whitney. I'm known as Shapespear on the Thingiverse, and this is Blender Basics for 3D Printing Part 1. So if you just opened up Blender after having installed it, this is the default screen that comes up. Before we start playing with this, I'm going to show you one quick tip, which will make Blender a whole lot easier to use. If you go up to the File menu, and go down here to User Preferences, and go to Input, and click here, select with left. You can click here to save user settings and then close that. Now, you've changed Blender's default selection so that it uses your left mouse button instead of your right mouse button, which is how Blender is set by default. Um, this makes Blender operate like every other program you've ever used and makes it a whole lot easier to learn. So, here is your uh, basic default setup. There's a cube, there's a light source, and a camera. Well, we're not going to use any of those for 3D printing. We don't care about them, so we're going to make them go away. And the way we want to do that, this is your first Blender uh, key shortcut, um, is we're going to hit A, which is select all and deselect. Okay, so we had something selected, we hit A, it deselected it, we hit it again, it selects all. All right, so you cycle between deselect and select all. It seems a little bit tricky, you know, a little bit strange to, to start with, um, but once you get used to it, it's an extremely efficient way to, to you know, change between selections. Um, once we have them selected, we hit the delete key and click to confirm it, and now everything is, is a blank slate and we can load in a model for 3D printing. Uh, if we go up to the file menu and go uh, save startup file, you can save this blank space as your as your default startup file. What opens when you when you uh, open a new file, um, which is handy because then you don't have to eliminate all of those objects. So we're dealing with 3D printing here. So we're going to go up to the file menu and go import STL. We're going to import an STL file. Uh, in this case, we're going to import pighead.stl, one of my personal favorite models. Now, kind of a strange view that came up um, because we are actually inside it. Um, but our first thing we're going to learn how to do is zoom back using your roller and the middle button of your mouse. Roll back, and there you go. Um, if you click and hold the middle button of your mouse, you can move around, and it's kind of like picking up an object and rotating it around in space. So that's a very useful thing if you want to see, like this guy has a wall hanger built into the back that you can see when you swing him around like that. Um, there are other ways to, to move around that are a little bit more efficient. Uh, using your keyboard, if you hit 7, that uh, defaults to a top view. If you hit one, that defaults to a front view. Hit three, that gets you a side view. Now, you can also hit control seven, and that takes you to a bottom view. Control one takes you to a back view, and as you've probably figured out by now, control three takes you to your other side view. Okay. Um, Right now we're in perspective mode, which gives you kind of a distorted view of what things look like when you print them. Um, if you hit five, that toggles you out of distorted, out of uh, the perspective view into ortho view, which is what I use for most of the work that I'm that I'm doing in Blender because I don't really want to want to see the the perspective. Okay, so here we have a basic model that we have imported into Blender. And what are some of the basic things we'd want to do? Um, well, if we look over here, we can see that the dimensions of it are a little bit too big for my printer. Uh, 555 is a little bit too big on the x-axis. Now these, the units, by the way, that Blender uses are, are just sort of non-denominational Blender units, but when you export an STL and import it into a slicer, those units will be interpreted as millimeters, which is convenient because that's sort of the unit most of us use um, when we're setting up our printers. So if we want to shrink this a little bit, make it a little bit smaller, there's a couple of different things we can do. Uh, we can 
click here and directly enter. Suppose I want to change it to 140 millimeters. Enter that directly. Now you notice that that didn't change everything proportionally, right? It changed them, uh, shrunk them a little bit in the X dimension, but not in the other dimensions. Um, so you can control Z and um, undo that. And if we want to sh you know, shrink things uniformly, a couple of options you can, you can do. Um, you can enter the values and enter the same value for scale in each of these selections here. Uh, but an easier thing to do is if you hit S, and that puts you into scaling mode, then you zoom in, moving your mouse in a little bit, and you can see the dimensions as they change. Um, and you can figure out where you want to be to fit onto your printer nicely. 140 on the X dimension is about right for my printer. So you left click and you're done. Um, a little tip on this, and this is true about most Blender things, if you uh, are really close to the center of your object like this and you hit S to scale, you don't have very much control um, because the distance that, that you're moving to affect the changes is proportionate to how close you are to the object. Okay, So just to give you an example, I have a really hard time locking down the exact size that I want there. If I right click, I can get out of that, I can escape it, um, and do another version of it where I am further away when I hit the scale and now I can move it really smoothly because I've got all of that range to work with. So that's just a quick tip. Um, you want to start away from the object when you activate the tool. Okay, so I'm going to move this to, change this guy to about 140 in the X dimension and click OK on that. All right, so that's a good, a good size um, for, for my print. Now, I have him oriented pretty well the way I want him for my printer. Um, the long dimension sort of is going side to side or in, or in the X dimension, which is typically the larger dimension on most printers. But suppose I have a printer which is you know different and um, I want to rotate him. A couple ways you can do that. You can enter rotations numerically up here. Um, so suppose we want to rotate him in the Z axis. Uh, 90 degrees or probably minus 90 degrees would be more what I'd be looking for. Um, you can do it that way. Um, if we undo those, you can also um, uh, do basically the same same shortcut except in, instead of doing S for scale, do R for rotation. Uh, and then you can spin them around. This is handy with something like this. This is a scan of a actual pig head, um, so it's not lined up perfectly. Um, but if we line it up the way we want it and left click, we've got it done there. Now, an important thing to remember when you're doing a rotation using the uh, keyboard shortcut um, is that you're rotating around an axis which is perpendicular to your view. So in this case, your, 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 your view is coming straight out the screen at you. Um, and that's the axis that you're rotating around. So that works well because here we hit seven to put ourselves in the uh, top view. Um, if you we're in, say, a view like that, and you hit R to rotate. Now you'll notice here that all of the X, the Y, and the Z axis are all changing because we're a little bit skewed and we're rotating around this sort of funny off axis. Now if we go to our front view, we can look at that and you see that's death to 3D printing. Um, you want to be lying flat on the build plate. This will never do. Um, you can sort of see how, if we go from front view to side view, that that would be an absolute nightmare to try and print. Um, but luckily, there's a couple ways we can uh, undo that. If we go up here and zero out the axes, that'll bring us back flat. 
Uh, the other thing you can do, of course, is just undo it if you notice, you know, relatively quickly what you've done. Suppose you get several steps down the line um, and before you realize that you've made a mistake that you want to undo, well, there's another option. You can do Control, instead of Control Z, you do Control Alt Z. That brings back the Undo History menu. Um, and this is very useful because you can step back through multiple steps. Um, in this case, we can step back to uh, before that rotation and then redo our our uh, rotation here. How do we decide we want to do that? Rotate like that till he looks good. Perfect. Okay. And since we were in hit seven to be in our top view, he's rotated perfectly around the z-axis and you can see he's still lying flat on the table. So useful thing to keep in mind. Um, remember that you can always undo multiple steps and if you get things totally out of whack you know sometimes you need to step back um, as with everything uh, saving as you go along is a very useful thing to do um, when you save in blender it saves as a blender file now i don't often mess with those things um, unless it's something like well sort of the equivalent of, of photoshop if you're working in a, in a file with a lot of different layers you save a photoshop file uh, blender is kind of the same way if you have a lot of different elements you have together um, that you're working on save it as a blender file and you preserve all of all of the separate elements uh, if you're just working with one thing like this um, i would just export this as an stl and not uh, not mess around with saving a blender file. They just you know, take up extra space. So if you're all done rescaling it, reorienting it, and ready to export, go down to the export menu, export an STL. In this case, we're just gonna copy it over the old one. Click export, and in a couple seconds, depending on how big your file is, it will export it. Speaking of file sizes, an important thing to remember in Blender, especially when you start working with uh, sculpting tools and working with subdividing meshes where you can get a lot of data going at once, um, is to look up here and you see the first number here is vertices and that's uh, 108,112 vertices. Uh, then you have also faces and triangles. In this case, since it's an STL, all of our faces are triangles, so those two numbers are the same. Uh, those are very important numbers to keep an eye on. Just sort of the only one I really ever look at is vertices. Um, you want to learn based on what kind of computer you're using how many vertices you can handle gracefully. Um, if you have a faster computer with more memory, you can handle more um, and, uh, you know, without bogging things down. Um, if you're in a situation where your computer is slowing down and, and is, uh, you know, really, you know, you, you tell it to, to move something and it, and it uh, takes a real long time to respond, that can get really frustrating. Look up here at your vertices and see if you haven't uh, done something to subdivide your mesh or something because you can very quickly get into millions of vertices and that will slow down just about any computer. Um, I'm running on a quad core i7, fairly fast computer but a couple of years old. Uh, I can handle about a million vertices um, before I start to slow down to the point where it's really annoying. So. Remember where to look for that, and uh, if, if, if stuff starts um, messing up, then you can always check up there and see if that's what's, what's doing it. So that's it for part one. Be sure to join me for future episodes of Blender Basics for 3D Printing.